Hi, Michael Nischke here from RetirementSingularity.com. Today's video is about 3D printing or 3D manufacturing and how that's going to affect us in the years to come. So what is 3D printing or 3D manufacturing? Essentially, it's printing out 3D objects on something that looks a lot like a desktop printer. And this technology is going to have great creative impact in our lives to come, as well as destructive impact in the economy and some aspects of our lives as well. It will enable us to print all kinds of things very cheaply at our house or at the local depot, but it will also have huge impact on the manufacturing sector and the retail sector, as well as the jobs in those parts of the economy. It will also have major impact and many of the, investment of the investments that we might own. Check out this talk by Alex Daly, who is Casey Research Chief Technology Strategist. The future of manufacturing is a little machine like this. This is built by a company called Stratasys. Stratasys is a um, result of a merger between a large U.S. corporation and a uh, large Israeli corporation that are both leaders in a technology called additive manufacturing, or what most people have heard of it called is 3D printing. And the 3D printing analogy, it comes from a very old version of this kind of technology where people took literally the heads off of inkjet printers, these little cheap print heads, and instead of having them shoot out ink, they shot out plastic. And they ran over the same spot over and over and over again building up little layers of plastic and they can build little you know, toys and, and models and things like that. Well this is actually an industry that's been around, I think most people don't realize, since the early 1980s. Additive manufacturing has been growing at a 27 percent rate since that period of time and it's hit that hockey stick. It's at the beginning of that growth curve where now the companies in this space are selling tens of thousands of systems a year. The price of a machine has dropped from about $800,000 to $80,000 in the industrial space. There are 3D printers that cost as little as $2,000 now for doing things like prototyping. It's just like the PC industry was. In fact, it's so much like the PC industry that it's driven by hobbyists. The 3D printing industry, what's really fascinating about it is there are these maker clubs out there. Maker Fair and Maker Bot and all these kind of clubs were guys like this, guys who were Bill Gates and Steve Jobs, members of the Berkeley Computer Club at the same time before the PC took off. The geeks were off toiling around with this stuff, bringing down the cost of this stuff, experimenting. In 2007, five years ago, there were less than 100 personal 3D printers even built. You pretty much know where all of them are, thanks to the fact that everybody shared them on the internet. Everybody, oh, I built a 3D printer. I built it. these personal level printers defined as you know, costing less than $1,000 uh, to build. Now there are greater than 50,000 of these things. And by the end of next year, there will probably be somewhere on the order of about a quarter million of these machines out there. Cheap machines. In fact, they make one called the RepRap um, that can actually build 90% of the parts required to build itself. So, thank you, my robot la masters. I hereby secede. You guys are in charge. Uh, now that they can replicate, they can walk, they'll give me my little black mat, I'll stand there and load trucks. Now, in all seriousness, additive manufacturing is, is revolutionary for a whole bunch of really interesting reasons. Number one is, in the early 1980s, the only thing you could do was thermoplastics. They weren't useful for anything. They were brittle, they fell apart, they were these kind of silly little things. Now, with additive manufacturing, you can do all kinds of different metals, aluminums and steels and stuff. There are techniques like selective laser sintering. Selective laser, selective laser sintering is actually what built this little guy here. This is an electron microscope looking at an item that was carved to a precision of 10 nanometers, or about a third of the size of the transistor on the average Intel chip. I mean, we're talking molecular scale. This technology is still in the lab, but it's based on the same technology that 3D Systems in the United States, the second largest 3D printing company in the world, that they have out there for producing metallic objects. This thing is precise to the atom, yet can produce a meter of material a second. So think about that. 
Think about how imprecise manufacturing is today. Retooling, testing, molds, all this stuff. With good software, with techniques like selective laser sintering, with the traditional thermoplastic extrusion, with some of the other really advanced 3D printing technologies out there, we're now in a position where we can manufacture things without waste. We can manufacture them when we need them because we don't have all the tooling changes, all the complications. One machine can make two entirely separate, different shapes of parts, one right after the other, with no context switching cost. Nothing. So instead of having a factory that makes widgets and a factory that makes wadgets, just have a machine that prints four widgets, five wadgets, four widgets, nine wadgets, depending on who orders what. It's revolutionary because it gets rid of inventory, it moves production to a more local environment. Instead of labor is no longer what makes production important. Skill is what makes production. The intellectual value of an invention is where all of the value is created with additive manufacturing. But it doesn't just end there. It doesn't just flip the economics of manufacturing on its head and make it so that shipping material over to China only to put it together and ship it back here is cheaper. It allows us to make things we could never make before. You can make shapes, you can create these tessellations, you can print out things. I've seen people print out, using plastic, a full-size mattress that weighs maybe about 20 pounds and yet is as firm and secure as one of those thermo, you know, these uh, what are memory foam mattresses. Right? So you're talking about something that weighs like, like a, a little bit. And why that's important, we can create all those lightweight materials we've been reading about in popular science and in wired and popular mechanics for 30 and 40 years. These materials that are going to allow us to have cars that go 200 miles per gallon. Look, you, your car can't get 200 miles per gallon unless it weighs 200 pounds. It's just, it, it violates the law of physics. But if you can make a car that's as strong as a current car that gets hit by a Hummer and does just fine, but really only weighs 200 pounds, you're going to have 200 mile per hour cars. And that's what's interesting. Additive manufacturing allows you to create shapes in infinite amounts of detail and in infinite amounts of construction patterns, anything you can come up with. The exponential growth and the power of technology is driving the advances in 3D printing technology very quickly. There are now some basic models that you can buy for, your, for home use for under $1,000. Just imagine how the manufacturing industry and the retail industry will be affected by this technology in the years to come. Uh, you could print pretty much anything you need from home or for larger objects you walk down to your local 3D warehouse printer and print out, print out your new couch or whatever it might be. Uh, certainly an incredibly disruptive technology, but also one that could transform economy in many different ways. Along uh, with this, another technology called 3D scanning is something also to keep an eye on, where you can just basically take pictures from various uh, angles uh, of an object, feed that data into a 3D printer, and print out that object, voila. Uh, quite, quite amazing. Uh, 3D manufacturing or 3D printing is just one of the four uh, disruptive and transformative technologies that Alex talks about in his video. Uh, the other three are digital content, robotics, and biological medicine, uh, all of which will have huge impacts in our lives to come, and we'll be talking about this more on Retirement Singularity. See the link to Alex's full talk down below, below this video. This is Michael Mischke from Retirement Singularity. Live really long, really well, and prosper. See you next time.